Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker. We are about to defend this lovely little trading outpost from some bandits that are coming to harass them and, and uh, I don't know, extort? I don't know, but demand some payment uh, for the Stag Lord, and we kind of disagree about that. We are pretty tired. It's interesting, I'm wondering if uh, Jathale just doesn't get tired because she's undead. State your desire. Is her, like, undeadness listed anywhere, even? It's bleeding touch. The melee touch attack, creature takes bleeding, treat affliction, that everyone's got that built in. Elf? Pallid Princess. Oh. Oh, that's, I think that's your deity. Yeah, okay. Death domain. Undead creature! There it is! Aha! No constitution score? Oh, you didn't need it. It is blanked out. Undead use their charisma instead. Immunity bleed, death effects, disease, paralysis, poison, sleep effects, and stunning. That is really useful! A little awkward to heal you, but yeah. Actually, speaking of, we actually have some spell slots back. I guess from from resting or from uh, need to concentrate. from the leveling. Becoming distracted leads to becoming dismembered. What the hell is saying that? It must be me. Huh. Uh, I don't think anything else. Anyone else has got anything ready? All right. Well, it's time for us to face the bandits. Leg, let's talk to you. Um, tell me about yourself. Tell me about the man. Now we can just. Uh, I'm prepared for the attack. Get in your position and wait. Fear not, I'll stand between you and the scum. You're under my protection. Oh, Valerie's gonna be an excellent sort of like right-hand woman or like a seneschal or something like that. Just a car, one of the other cool words that is used for people who meet out justice. Amari flexes her shoulder. Finally a fight. Was bored with all that talking. I see you're not easily cowed. I beg you, be careful. And please don't let Oleg do anything too risky. Svetlana, go hide inside. We're going to meet our guests. Time passes. Six. Man, could I have gotten a rest in on this? All right, so he's behind some boxes. Oh, he's setting things off. Boom! Well, that seemed to have worked out pretty... Wow, they're all dead except this guy, and this guy's got, like, a sliver of health? I can't even see any hit points on this guy. All right, let's just unpause. Are we going to step through our own trap over there? Hold on. Pull back. Let him walk through there. Oh, they've got some more. Okay, that trap definitely did work, though. Advance. Charge! More traps. Oh! I've got my alchemist bombs back. So I guess it did give us rest, and I don't have to worry about friendly fire anymore. Hello! Excellent. Let's do that, and I can shield my buddies as well. Yeah, so I'll focus on the guy at range here while they just go and meet, leave that one. Okay. Let's say they're going to walk through the grease now. But this should be fine. Okay, the fact that we got the free rest is going to be immense. Oh, there's more! There we go. Oh, he tried to move back. Attack of opportunity. Well, let's loot everything here, because we are going to want to sell that. Gate hinges are deformed. Deadbolt is broken. Seems someone didn't want to close the gate. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk to Leg. It's just what I'm going to call him. Oleg is breathing heavily, but he shakes his fist in the air menacingly. You rats got what you deserved. Now they'll know better than to treat honest people like cattle. We should call Boken out before it freezes in those bushes. <laughs> now, my lord, head on up to the guest rooms on the second floor. You deserve some rest of such a battle. I need to clean things up. And this is for your efforts. Now, don't offend me by trying to turn it down. Just take it. An honest fight deserves an honest reward. If that were more common practice in this world, I think life would be much better. 100 gold for us. Don't mind. And now we can go inside. Uh, oh, I can't trade with you right now. Okay. All according to plan. Let's head on in. No mistakes. And talk to Svetlana. We'll talk tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Can I, can I just like rob everything? You don't you don't mind, right? I trust me, I'm I'm totally well, I'm neutral, I guess I'm not good. But I think I'm probably a good person. This is just not over possible. here. Oh, we can't pick this lock. We need higher skill ups to pick the lock on that guy. More loot. More loot that we're gonna send them. Big old chest over here. Personal stash. I think this is like our bank, basically. And anything here, there's probably going to be a personal stash in all of our bases of operation. The first time I came here, I think maybe after I slept, I got a pop-up letting us know that this is effectively a um, 
yeah, like our base here. This is where our NPCs will go when we're not around, that sort of thing. Or when, when they're not in our party, this is where they're going to go. Um, there's a couple other things, but yeah. Oh, and that when we walk around here, it's just going to be us alone, but it's a good opportunity for us to go and talk to the other NPCs that are normally in our party. And then when we lo leave the inn area, that's when we reform our party. You wake up from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night long. In it, you saw a wall of unnaturally thick fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. A quick look out the window, and you find out that the fog was not a figment of your imagination, not a dream. And then... Hear me. Please hear me. Can you hear me? The half-transparent outline of a beautiful nymph appears before you. Even in this ghostly form, it's clear she's exhausted. Her shoulders are slouched, and her large blue eyes burn within her pale face. Her voice is barely more than a whisper as she reaches towards you. It seems that only you can see or hear the nymph. Who are you? Who am I? Just a tear shed by the land itself. The bitter sigh of nature. I am a nymph, the guardian of this area. A defeated guardian. Call me the guardian of the bloom, if you wish. I like it. Guardian of the bloom it is. Uh, <laughs> we could be a perv. Well, or just inappropriate anyway. Like, settle down, buddy. Keep it in your pants. What do you want from me? Aid. Salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. The one you call the Stag Lord. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, the Stag Lord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. And not just in the world of people. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. My forests and my flowers suffocate in this fog. Soon even I will vanish as the last ray of light fades at dusk. Always nice when you get uh, multiple quests to kill the same target, right? Okay, so the Stag Lord is responsible for the fog? Yes. It hides his fortress as well as his dark deeds. But while responsible, he did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid uh -huh. who has betrayed even himself. Uh -huh. I know not why the powers did not leave this renegade, but even I was unable to defeat him. How can I help you? This fog it enshrouds in tangles. I think we just could have told her, like, I'm not interested. If only I could learn how it was created. But my powers wane. I have barely the strength to call out to you. All I know for certain is that somewhere in this forest lies an old house. Old house? And it echoes with the remnants of a strange power. The Stag Lord and his druid were there. The fog hides this place from me, but I can point you to the bandits' camp near the Thornford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there and listen to the echo. Catch the whispers. Search for anything that can tell you how the fog was created. Once the fog clears, nature will breathe again. And you will be able to easily find your way. All right. So we can't deal with the stag, Lord, until we deal with the fog. So we got to start by checking out the thorn ford over here where there's an old house. All right. I understand. Farewell. I don't believe in fate, stranger. But our meeting seems more than a coincidence. Get some rest. Done. And there we go. So, yeah. So we can just wander around here all by our lonesome. Boom, boom, boom. In due time. Here, we'll talk to Svetlana. Ah, uh, good day. I hope you're feeling all right after that battle. I can't thank you enough for what you've done. I definitely don't want to waste your time, but if you have a moment, I have a request. Mm, what do you want to ask me? This is a very personal request, and maybe not important enough for your time. I completely understand if you say no. But the first time the Stag Lord's thugs came here demanding money, they also took my wedding ring, just tore it off my hand. It's just a trinket, really, but it meant so much to me. I remember every moment of the day Oleg came to me, that ring in his hand, to ask if I'd marry him. I was standing in a fancy dress on the stairs of my father's home, fearing that I'd misheard something or that I'd say something stupid and everyone around would laugh. 
If you happen to find my ring among the bandit's possessions, please bring it back to me. It's easy to recognize. My name is engraved inside the man. Svetlana drops her eyes, lowering her voice. There is one more thing. Among the bandits, there's a dark-haired woman who wields dual axes. She, she was the one at the door, the one who disappeared and didn't, didn't fight. Uh, she's not bad in a fight. In fact, she can be extremely dangerous and cruel. But please, I beg you, show her mercy if you have a chance. Um, you know, I'd be, I'd be happy to help. Or, you know, I could say this. Either way says yes. And maybe, you know, I don't know, I want to be polite. Why, be polite. I'd be happy to help. Doesn't mean we have to do it. We could even pocket the ring, but we'll tell her. Um, you guys can pause and read this. I've already read this before, but, you know, we get a little bit of backstory. That's going to be fine. We can tell me about the Stag Lord. He's not just an average bandit. If no one puts him to stop to him, he'll turn the Stolen Lands into his personal kingdom, a kingdom of fear and oppression. Uh, brush. You know, I truly believe this. I don't, you know, I don't think we're going to end up being lawful good. Hopefully, hopefully it won't drift that way, but maybe we will. Who knows what's going to happen? I remember when I played Mass Effect the very first time, I was going to go the Renegade one because I wanted to be a badass. But the more and more and more I got into the story, the more invested I became in the people and the situation. And I ended up shifting to full Paragon. Maybe the same thing will happen here. But yeah, it would be a kingdom of lawlessness. Once I've dealt with Stag Lord, your life will improve. Okay to go very well so uh anorial eight eyes over here i believe is just a mechanic for um recruiting extra fighters i think it was like 2000 gold and the tutor service i believe is how we respec i think that's all this character is here i went through all the conversation before um and i didn't really see anything else going on so I, I believe that's all that there is. If there's something more, well, we'll discover it at some point in the future. That is not far. Do, do, do. So we can talk to Oleg again. Greetings, certainly ruffled those villains' feathers. That I did. Anyway, new day, new troubles. Have you seen the fog? Never seen anything like it. The road to Restov looks like someone spilled milk and it just hung in the air. Couldn't see anything through the soup, not even with a torch. Feels like witchcraft to me. I bet the Stag Lord's involved somehow. Rumors say he deals with all kind of magic. Uh, Tell me about yourself. Yeah, I need to take care of the Stag Lord. Do you know of anything that could help me find him? Quite a task. Stag Lord has a fortress somewhere in the area, but only a few chosen from his most trusted of his rabble are ever invited. The location of fortress is heavily guarded secret. With this fog hanging around, I imagine it'd be even harder to find. Can you tell me anything else about him? Not much. Less than a year ago, as soon as he got here, took over everything. Uh... Tried to warn the Stag Lord with a typical gang leader. They went less than the rumors about him are horrible. He'll kill a person if they so much disagree with him. He'll never reveal his face. Those who've seen him up close report the same thing. Ugly scars cover every inch of his skin, not covered by his clothes. All right. Well, I think we picked up some more loot around your uh, your base here. So we're just going to go ahead and sell another 500 bucks worth of that stuff. Hey, we're almost at the Ring of Protection, which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm going to trade with Boken. He does sell, like, potions and things. I don't think we need that. Uh, can you help me in any way? Oh! Well, since you're asking, there's a cave nearby. I used to pick berries there, but the place has been overrun by spiders. The berries are red, look a lot like raspberries. Fang berries, I call them. Be real grateful if you gathered a basket of them and brought them back. Just be quick if you do. They spoil quickly. Fangberry cave. Oh! Spiders in the cave are mean. Here, let me give you some alchemical fire. Crafted it myself. Burn those spiders to a crisp. That'll teach them for taking over my fangberry cave. Also, I need a bucket of moon radishes. They're a rare, mysterious plant. Don't know where to find them, but I know that cobalts gather them and value them highly. Why do you need fangberries and moon radishes? Well, tell me later. All right, I'll try to help. Uh, remind me what do you do here. Yeah, you make potions and stuff. All right, I should go. Now, we can talk to our various NPCs oot and a boot over here. Uh, I guess we explored everything, so they should show up on the map. Yeah, okay. If, if they're in the fog of war, I'm not sure they show up. Come on. Thank you. Get over there. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. There we are. Hello, Amiri. We gotta talk? All right, spill it. I'm listening. So, we're just talking. You don't like it? Depends on what we're gonna talk about. If it's about monsters or swords or scars, I prove that's good. Uh... If you're going to ask questions like why, or what for, or how, screw this. <laughs> or have you gotten even harder ones? I don't know, tell me about yourself. Um, simple question seems to puzzle Amiri. She scratches her head and then starts counting on her fingers. 
First, I'm a barbarian. I'm strong. Uh, I grew up in the realm of the Mammoth Lords. I left my tribe, the Six Bears. Amiri thoughtful, looks thoughtfully at her four bent fingers and shrugs. And I like fights, she concludes, bending her thumb. I guess she just wanted to form a fist. What's it like to be a barbarian in the Six Bears tribe? Ha, our people are big and strong. Cut monsters in half one swing. We can walk three days and nights with no rest. We can eat whole fried aurochs. Guess you do a lot of training to become as strong as you are. Training? <laughs> no one freaking trained me. The boys of the Six Bears got all the training. All I could do is watch. You know what? They were still crap, even after all that training, because I kicked their butts hard. Animals, bandits, monsters, all thought they were stronger than me. Idiots! Because if you start a fight, you think you can win. You think you're stronger than your enemy. I defeated them all. See the scars on my face? Hmm. What does realm look like? Huge and freezing, no place for worn, blah, 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 blah. You guys can pause if you want to read that. Again, I've been through these conversations here. Uh, oh yeah, why'd you leave? Because they were assholes, all of them. Men were cowards and scoundrels, and women were scared like sheep. Men think no girl can be a fighter because they're weak. They're afraid a woman can beat them. And females just nod. Go sow hides, cook meat, watch kids. That's what they always say. But I'm a warrior, damn it. I won't cook hides and watch meat. And Mary is already shouting, her fists clenched tightly. I told him so. I went hunting with men. And what did I get? Still the same. You are woman. You stay home. Even give me a nickname. The Soft Chieftain. Like a warrior woman was a funny joke. Damn, I even went to hunt those shit-faced frost giants. And there, there... Amiri suddenly stops, breathing heavily, sweat beating on her forehead. After a moment, Amiri waves her hand awkwardly and forces herself to grin. So I left. Coward, scoundrels, and sissies they were. That's why. Hmm. You're quite a good fighter. Amiri jerks her head up. Quite good, huh? Compared to who? If I were a crappy male, I'd fight better. Is that what you want to say? Or you say I could be better? Like, go get some training, Amiri, right? Like, um, meant exactly what I said. You're a good fighter. Don't raise your voice to me ever again. Chaotic good. You're very good in a fight. You're an excellent warrior. Just giving you a compliment. That's all. Let's go with this one. Amiri continues to breathe heavily for several seconds, glaring at you, but she finally calms down. I won't. She wonders. Forget it. I'm rather rude. I don't want to say that. Ah, thanks for telling me. I'll talk about something else. Why'd you leave the, your tribe? What's the story of the Frost Giants? Told you already. They were assholes. They treat women like sheep, not fighters. As for giants, I'll tell you later. Someday, maybe. So I'm assuming we gotta... I, either, you know, just advance in the main quest, or maybe there's, like, personal missions or something we can get about this. That's a formidable sword. It is this massive, oversized, like, anime-type sword here. You bet it's not simple. Check out how big it is! She proudly raises the blade, and you notice that, even though Amiri's extremely strong, she still has difficulty wielding such a large sword. Yeah, she's got a minus two to hit with it. This sword belonged to a real blasted frost giant. I killed the beast and took this looker for myself. Fits me perfectly. My damn trophy. Miri's eyes flash with menace as if she's challenging some invisible enemy to try to take her trophy. And then what I worry about, it's like, it's going to be so easy to misclick this. I assume there's a confirmation screen after this, but it would be so easy for me to accidentally click the, like, screw you and leave forever button. Thank you for talking to me. Let's speak again later. Talking, talking. When we'll do some monster killing instead. Well, we'll work on it. Now, what I'm very excited about is talking to Jethael because I did not get the opportunity to do this before because she wasn't in my party. Instead, I had Lindsay. Jethael greets you with a nod. Speak. <laughs> What's it like to be undead? My god, you can't just go around asking people why they're undead. First, I would like to hear your story. Which, again, seems kind of weird and curt and like, like, lead into it. Like, let it happen naturally. I don't know. Stories, Jethael shrugs. Stories are boring and a waste of time. I have killed. I was exiled from Kionin. Kionin? Homeland of the Elven Race. Oh, okay. I died. I was raised by Orgothua's gift. This is my story. Uh... Whoa. Who were you before your exile? It's rather amusing. I belong to a wealthy family and held the high position in the courts of the Yadara, the capital of Kionin. When my little wrongdoings were revealed, the trial was held in the very same court where I tried cases and delivered sentences over several hundred years. An awkward situation, don't you think? Who did you kill and why? Family. Four. Jethael's voice is calm and ordinary, as if she's speaking of something trivial. But why is the more interesting question. What is the worth of a thousand years if you cannot enjoy it like your first ten dozen springs? The elf's voice sounds unusually vehement. Vehement? Vehement. I don't know. Everyone considers elves ever young, but our youthfulness is but a mask, a threadbare ritual gown. What lies underneath? The dust of years and jaded repetition. With each year, the dust grows thicker and erstwhile joys cease to excite and cloy as a dish you've tasted a thousand times. Long did I search for a way to avert this faith. Fate. 
Don't I, who has truly tasted life, deserve a better lot than those benumbed old elves who close themselves to the world? And I found a way in the ancient texts of Urgothwa, a ritual involving the blood of my kin, a trifle that would make each day feel as a holiday created specially for me. The ritual gave strength not only to my body, but to my mind and my soul. And my mind whirled at every sensation, each sip of wine or silken caress. Oh, how I miss this. My cousin was the first I used for the ritual. It was a simple matter to pass her death. As okay, no, you're evil. Okay, right. <laughs> I thought, oh, she's undead. There's probably some like sad story. Yeah, she's listed as evil because she's probably just, you know, mostly jaded and upset with. No, 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 you're bad. You're all kinds of bad. Mm, okay. Um, it was a simple matter to pass her death as an unfortunate accent, but the enchantment would not last. I had to find another and again conceal my trail. With the third death, my family grew suspicious, and upon the fourth, my deeds were finally revealed. Such a pity. If not for this, my unlife even now would overflow with burning pleasure, for I have dozens of useless relatives. Uh huh. Well, all right. <laughs> Hope you suffered fair punishment for your crimes. You kill innocent elves for entertainment and pleasure. That's abominable. That's the thing. Like, was it even a ritual or does she just get off? Like, is she a serial killer? And she's just getting off on, you know, murdering people. I'm not to judge you for your past deeds. And, you know, arguably, if you're willing to reset things, you might still be useful. I don't know. Objective worth pursuing, but it would have been better to refrain from secret murder. There are many ways to arrange death while keeping within the boundaries of laws and decency. In the end, we all live for ourselves. Live with others shouldn't outweigh our own. <laughs> huh. Well, I'm not going to go down the good route in here. You know, lawful evil might be the way to go. I'm actually a little bit worried that I might end up with lawful neutral, but that might be okay for a lord, you know? Fair and balanced, without emotion. An objective worth pursuing would have been better refrain from secret murder. Ways to range a death will keep them within. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, could you have killed people that, like, you know, were criminals? Because that might be okay. It is much more difficult to accomplish this in Kionin than the River Kingdoms, Jathael cringes. But you are correct. I have learned a lesson from my past and will be more careful in the future. Mm-hmm, okay. You have any family? <laughs> you mean someone I would hesitate to sacrifice? Perhaps my daughter. Ooh. I would regret the wasted effort. The creature turned out quite well, like a properly trained dog or well-managed horse. Well, aren't you nice? Is your exile your only punishment for murder? For an elf, exile is serious punishment. There is no other Kionian in this world. Even I, who despises its hypocrisy, must admit as much. How did you die, and what happened after? I... I don't remember my death. I was stunned by the sentence of exile, and I admit I showed weakness. I wandered aimless, absorbed in despair, without concern for my safety or sustenance. And then... Then I remember desolate rocks, a stone I lay upon, a convulsion passing not only through my whole body, but through my soul. Then I awakened, cold, calm, my body overwhelmed with strength, but haunted by a strange internal silence. So probably you don't have a soul anymore. There are bloody prints of bone feet on the stone next to me, the sign of the goddess. A battle scythe lay nearby. That was the first and last time I heard Urgothoa's voice. She spoke but three words, Hail the Inquisitor. That is all. She has neither addressed me nor answered my pleas ever since. Well, that's a hell of a backstory. I will not bother you with the story of how I tried to comprehend my new condition. Soon I had a chance to put my new powers to the test. A group of my kin had tracked me through the woods. They were insolent and would pay dearly for this. But I had to reckon how I might free myself from their persistent chase. A powerful protector from among the short-lived could help me, and the sword lord seemed suitable. That is all. Tell me about your birthplace. I hope you do not ask for mild, idle curiosity. Kionian is the birthplace of the elves. The other races are allowed to visit within reasonable limits, usually only so far as Greengold. That is the enclave for half-breeds, and the short-lived, a whim of our queen. I enjoyed going there sometimes, as, as to a wild beast show. Dude, so racist. Beyond this character of a city, Kionian is a mixture of grandeur and the sad remains of ancient glory. I wonder if this would be different if I was an elf. Like, how would she react there? Hmm. All right, enough about your past. What's it like to be undead? <laughs> Do you wish to know what it means to me personally, or what powers and limitations it imposes? Yes. You regret not being alive anymore. Shadow passes over Jathael's face. You surely know how to ask questions. Two desires led me through life. To feel pleasure time and time again, and to achieve perfection. Unlife brought me closer to the second. I am changeless, 
torn from time. The chaos of the world and even the soul circle have no power over me. But everything comes with a price. Most things that brought me pleasure in life are meaningless to me now. How can I decide which is better? No purpose in life, living only for yourself, makes life and unlife equally senseless. Uh, bright life full of pleasure is better than unlife, though eternal. You become powerful, that's all that matters. It's much better than the life of ordinary mortals, and even elves. What is my character? What does he think? Honestly, if I could become like powerful and, and eternal, I would go do it too. So I'm going to go over here. Plus, it'll balance our alignment chart. I would prefer to have both. But meanwhile, I shall have to contend myself with power. So, yeah, how do healing spells and stuff work? It works the opposite. It's super bad. You want negative energy. You don't need sleep, though, right? I'm spared that bothersome need. But I hope you do not take this as a reason to invent additional responsibilities to entertain me during the night. I spend this time meditating and addressing the goddess. And, uh, <clears throat> so what about, uh, what, what about other stuff? A tactless and facile question. Facile? I think facile. That pleasure is now senseless to me as food or wine. Action without feeling. Jathael cringes. Uh, yeah, okay, <clears throat> no more questions about that. Tell me about your goddess. Might sound strange, but I know less than others about Argothua and her faith. My, I don't know. Argothua? Argotha. I don't know. I'll keep just faking it. My transformation into an Inquisitor was unexpected, but I'll answer to the best of my knowledge. What do you know of herself? Well, certainly, she was once a mortal woman, basking in life and pleasures that had to offer. Her passion was so strong that Argothua rebelled against Pharazma. By the way, the rest of this video is almost certainly going to be just reading conversation. In fact, I'll go and talk to, um, to Valerie after this as well. So the next episode will just start off with us adventuring. Um... Her passion was so strong that she rebelled against Pharazma. Okay, goddess of birth, death, and prophecy. All right. Um, after her own death, she escaped the power of the Lady of Graves and returned to the world as a goddess and the first undead. Since then, she has protected all who submit their souls to pleasure and passion, paying no heed to worn out mortals and the dictates of law. What does it mean to be an inquisitor of her? Question is more complicated than it seems. Inquisitor is by its nature the most zealous defender of their faith, the hand of their goddess in mundane affairs. When I received this title and power, I expected that Argothoa would tell me my mission, but this never happened. The goddess remains silent. There is only one reasonable explanation I can imagine. Discovered what is expected of me is part of my mission. So I reflect on this, make my prayers, and wait for a sign. Does she feud with other gods? No. But Farazma still tries to call her to order, and Serenra to heal her. Ah, okay. Um, ooh, knowledge world. Why is the cult of Argothua forbidden in much of Galarian? Is this our world? That's our world. Okay. Because our world is plagued by narrow-minded cowards, some tremble at the freedom granted by Argothua, so others fear the wrath of Pharazma and her priests. What does she require of her followers? To enjoy, to taste exquisite dishes, to feel lover's crest, to drink the enemy's suffering. A wonderful religion obligation, isn't it? Honestly, I might have to convert. That sounds like a lot of fun. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I mean, flat out murdering people still seems like a bad idea, but otherwise, do you have a brochure? What made you follow me? Curiosity, the need for a reliable ally. You see, I must come to understand what my goddess seeks from me. Agathwa gave me the powers of, in of Inquisitor without declaring her will to me. I await her reply, any hint or trace or clue. And I suppose our meeting was no mere accident. Besides... I imagine that several Keonian assassins still pursue me. They never risked attacking me while I was under the patronage of the Aldori. It seems unlikely to attack while I have reliable allies like you. But why do they follow you? I mean, it seems pretty clear. I don't know. They can't have been sent by the Queen. I'm a branded outlaw, but my punishment with exile, it's not the custom of elves to contravene their own verdicts. Hmm. Maybe it's your family, specifically. My attacker shouted something about threat and blood. I suppose they are a splinter group of feeble-minded minded, zealots, or someone on a quest for personal revenge. Or I wonder if something happened to her. She doesn't really remember her death, right? I wonder if something happened between her last memory and her awakening as an undead. And then there's the fuck off button, which, again, I'm worried about hitting accidentally one day. I'm hoping there's an extra confirmation screen. And then Valerie is going to be right up here. Greetings! <laughs> that seems too cheery. Greetings, Valerie sighs. Everything is well, I hope. I'm ready for new orders. Tell me about yourself. What exactly would you like to know? I was born to a noble family, though I didn't remain long on the family estate. My father sent me to the Order of the Eternal Rose, but I left once I realized that it didn't match my principles. Hmm, where are you from? What was your childhood like? 
I was born in Brevoy, but in fact, I've never seen much of the country. I spent my childhood in a remote estate owned by my noble family. My father is a respectable philanthropist and benefactor of the Church of Shilin. He is also a re renowned private collector and great admirer of the arts. So Shilin is the eternal rose. So yeah, goddess of art, beauty, love, music, and the half-sister of someone I don't know, Zon Kuthun. Okay. My mother saw to my education personally. From my early years, I learned good manners, how to behave at the dinner table, the proper form of words for every occasion. I also learned the difference between true nobles and lowborn upstarts, and I learned how to treat each of them properly. Our home was always under the protection of several paladins of Shailen. My father had donated a handsome sum to their order. One of them, a man of venerable age with a gray beard, once let me touch his shining armor. I still remember the admiration I felt when I touched the cold, polished steel. Valerie smiles. Of all the memories of my childhood, that one is somehow the warmest one. Why are you sent to the Paladin Order of the Eternal Rose? Ah, as you can imagine, from my first days I was surrounded by crowds of servants and nannies who never stopped praising my heavenly beauty. The Paladins of Shailen who used to visit our house echoed those praises. In the end, general consensus overwhelmed my father's better judgment. When I turned six, I was brought to the Church of Shailen and told that this would be my new home. That's rough! Don't pity me, though. I beg of you. Many who hear this story immediately assume that my parents were cruel and had no love for their child. My parents had respect for me. They taught me something that has supported me my, all my life, a sense of self-esteem. Besides, they didn't abandon me. Once every six months, they would come and visit me at the Order of the Eternal Rose. We had some tea and then had an hour to walk around the garden. Then they would take their leave, as etiquette demanded. Still sounds pretty sucky. What do they teach you in the Order? A variety of things. Some of them appealed to me, others I simply couldn't accept. I enjoyed the physical activities and swordmanship, but the arts, calligraphy, painting, poetry, and so many other ways to waste one's time. I guess that deep in my heart, I always knew I'd never be a true paladin in a shellin. Wielding a sword always felt more natural to me than handling a paintbrush. Why did you leave the order? Because of my heavenly beauty, she winces in contempt. According to Shellen's laws, all art is sacred, whatever form it takes. Several punishments await those who dare harm a painting, sculpture, or poem, no matter how worthless the drivel might be. My looks always attracted unwanted attention from the pilgrims and acolytes of the temple. I received my first poem dedicated to me when I was nine. The author was some wealthy geezer. That was only the beginning. Sculptures, pictures, poems, I was drowning in them. My admirers mobbed me, and I had to respectfully accept all their garbage. The clerics of the temple were mag magnanimous, magnanimous, bleh, but for my suitors made generous offerings to the church. But once, one time I just snapped. Some wealthy idiot has dedicated an extremely untalented poem to me, and he had the nerve to read it right in my face, holding my sleeve. The hour was late, and I was on my way to get some rest after a boring lesson on rhymes. I lost control and tore the poem apart right in front of him. Honestly, this whole thing is like so skeezy, right? Like... Everything about it is very, like, very cringe, very, ugh. I, she seems remarkably well-adjusted for what her life uh, was. Uh, so yes, I tore up the poem. The paladins wanted to impose some punishment upon me. I don't remember which one exactly. They wanted me to repent. Instead, I just gathered my things and left. What did you do after you left the order? I sent off for Restive. I wanted to get as far away as possible from Shellen and the destiny everyone seemed so ready to force upon me. Besides, the school of swordmanship in Restov had quite a decent reputation. Honestly, I was hoping for an opportunity to learn from the famous Aldori masters. Eventually, it became clear that their technique wasn't a good fit for me. They teach to avoid impact, whereas I prefer to raise my shield. But my abilities and skills, which I'd learned at the Order of the Eternal Rose, were enough to make the Sword Lords take an interest in me. They offered me a chance to join the mercenaries who served the Sword Lords, and I accepted. Ugh... It, 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 I want all the information, but it's like, dude, she just told you, like, how much she's got an issue about all this. Like, stop being a skis. But I, I do want to know, like, what this leads to. Ugh. Yeah, Valerie's gaze suddenly becomes cold. Yeah, exactly. See, I don't blame you. And here I'd hope to avoid the question. Well, let's get this over with once and for all. You should understand that I'm perfectly aware that most races, orders, and genders find me physically attractive. It's beyond my power to change that, but I've never given a potential admirer any reason to start a conversation with me. And it doesn't stop them! After leaving the order, I took a dagger and cut off the long hair they used to praise. Well, now I get letters praising the beauty of my eyes. It was because of my appearance... It's basically being like... Being a girl on the internet, right? <laughs> it's like... Getting all these random DMs and bullshit and requests and... Ugh. It was because of my appearance that I ended up in the Order of the Eternal Rose, though I never wanted to be a paladin. It was because of my beauty that an infinite number of suitors has pursued me, all of them confusing simple politeness with hints of affection. 
Valerie clenches her fists. But you know what I really want? Mm, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I want people to stop treating me like a piece of art. I want them to notice that I'm a person, that I'm capable of something more than smiling for paintings, where I sit wearing a lacy satin dress, holding a basket of peaches in my lap. Is that too much to ask? Last question comes out in a shout, though Valerie doesn't seem to realize it. Uh, thanks for your honesty. I understand very well. You're a true friend. See, it, it's like a little soon for this. Like, we've been on... I mean, we have fought side by side. Maybe that does create bonds, you know, relatively quick, right? True friend who I can trust with my life. Know what you mean, but still you shouldn't drive people away. You only want to open their hearts to you. It's not their fault you inspire such feeling. Like, that is such... Blech, blech. Well, while the shouting, simple question. What's becoming your precious self-control? Like, it's just some, like, shit answers. One seems a little intense with a true friend, but let's go with it. I am truly happy that you understand me. Thank you. And honestly, I do want to get along with Valerie very well, because she is neutral. I mean, she's lawful neutral, but, you know... And a fighter is going to be a great person for the party. Uh, someone that I think is going to be a really valuable thing when we get to the kingdom phase. Although I don't know how that works yet. But it just feels like this is a really good fit for us over here. So I really would like to keep um, the relationship with Valerie like really positive. All right, let's change the subject. Um, I don't know. We might have to wait. This is a lot of extra text. Uh, so yeah, here we find out a little bit more. Yeah, the Paladin Armored Artists, Love and Beauty, spoke to her of such contempt. What she do to earn your, 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 I don't know, your contempt or whatever I said here? Your anger. She's trying to ruin my life. <laughs> the goddess of everything useless that ever existed in this life. All the beauty in the world, all the art, all the solace, size in the moonlight. They'll never feed a single family. What's interesting is that uh, Lindsay, I believe, is, a, is, is devoted to this goddess because Lindsay's a bard who loves art and stories and things like that. So it kind of fits. I haven't seen them interact together, Lindsay and Valerie, but I suspect at some point they'll probably be something that would come up there. Uh, I beg you to restrain yourself from offering your own opinion. Trust me, I've heard everything you can tell me more than once. Nothing and nobody can change my mind. Uh, as for Shellen, she's the goddess of idlers. I almost joined her pr prosperous entourage. I'm just glad I was smart enough to announce her where I still could. Um, what kind of art did you practice? I used to be an embroiderer, still do that from time to time. It makes me think of uh, the start of Game of Thrones, right? Where they were doing um, some needlework, I think, with, uh, with the two Stark girls. Um... Treacherous blush covers her cheeks. It's nothing, I assure you. Just simple task. Keep my hands busy. Keep the glooming thoughts at bay. Nothing special. You know, everyone's got to have a hobby. It's still important. All right. We're going to uh, skip the rest of these. See, <laughs> you're an atheist. You don't worship any deity. I mean, she probably still believes the gods exist. But in this world, here in a fantasy world, a pure, true atheist that denies the existence of gods is pretty hard to imagine because there's literally, like, divine magic that you can go and see, right? But the idea that you acknowledge that they exist but not follow them, not worship them, that is that is a bold choice, you know? Because it's hard to... Like, they literally exist. And uh, walking away from that is, is interesting. Right, no guidance from above. I have my own good conscience and my leader's orders to live by. Uh, because you have plenty of suitors. You know you're really quite beautiful. God damn, it could be a crime to ignore your beauty. Dude, don't be a fucking incel. What is wrong with you? You're so eager to follow my orders. Why? What do you mean, why? I follow your orders. I've joined your campaign because I have faith in you. I believe your intentions to be noble, though things may not always turn out as you've planned. You're my commander. Your orders are law. It's my duty to follow them. Well, so long as you don't order me to do something that's absolutely dishonorable. But that would never happen, I hope. All right, we're going to say thanks for the conversation. As you wish. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, there we have it. We've talked to the three members of our party who are around here. I believe we've sold everything. I think we've done everything. We're probably ready to leave. And so on that note, we're going to put a cut in this episode. Thanks a lot for watching another one, folks. And I'm very eager to see what the wilds have waiting for us next time. Bye-bye.